If I'm Florida State, you can bet your bottom dollar, little orphan Annie, that I'm getting out of the ACC as fast as humanly possible. Not just because of one reason, but for many reasons. But the overarching theme that Florida State and their board of trustees or honestly all the rich guys getting together to make a decision is you got to know your worth. You have to know your value. So you mean to tell me on, on one hand, the ACC and whether you're Florida State, Clemson, Miami, Virginia, Virginia Tech, North Carolina, it doesn't matter if you're a legitimate player in college football in a legitimate brand being $30 million below Big Ten teams from a revenue standpoint and below SEC teams isn't sustainable in the first place. But you basically just got told by the college football playoff committee, who, by the way, the chair is from NC State that's in the ACC, that the Atlantic Coast Conference is the kids' table during Thanksgiving. You're just a little bit better than the group of five. And some people say, oh, well, Florida State's not going to get left out of a 12-team playoff. Well, if an ACC team goes 13-0 and wins the conference championship, they're not going to get left out of the 12-team. But best believe, if they'll leave you out of the four spots to get into the playoff when you're undefeated, they'll leave you out of the 10th spot if it's close. They'll leave you out of the 11th spot, and they'll sure as hell leave you out of the 12th spot as well. So I don't blame Florida State for getting together and wanting to pull the plug. Now, when it comes to the grant of rights, I'm not a lawyer. But I do know lawyers find a way to find a way. So when it comes to the grant of rights with the ESPN contract that doesn't run out till 2036, if I'm Florida State, I will find a way. And I don't blame them. And I don't think they're the only one. And if you believe that Florida State would make these moves without knowing if there's any interest from the Big Ten or the SEC, there's some beachfront property in Kansas I can sell you for a price that will blow your mind. Hey, everybody, if you're going to get in on the action and gamble on sports over the holidays and through the new year, there's only one place to do it the best way. That's at DraftKings Sportsbook. So download the app now with our code CRANE. That's C-R-A-I-N. No, it's not spelled like the bird because new customers can bet $5 on NFL action to score 150 instantly in bonus bets. Now, that's a gift that keeps on giving. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with our code CRANE, C-R-A-I-N. And remember, with DraftKings, the crown is yours. Let's bring in another guy that blew a lot of minds. In Statesboro, Michigan, now doing it in the sports media game. My good friend, David, a.k.a. Davida Cohn. Yes. And of course, it's Flaming Dragon Friday, so you know who's sitting to my right. This is Flaming Dragon! You bow to your Flaming Dragon! Bow to your sensei. That's exactly right. One and a half. One and a half? One and a half. Uh, if you don't know, if you're joining us for the first time, if you're watching on Rumble, if you're watching on X or Twitter, whatever they're calling it this week, <laughs> uh, I cannot say his government name. We cannot say his government name more than one time if it's at one and a half. David, I'm locked in. I'm locked in. I'm lo- Are you locked, locked in? in? This is the last show before Christmas. Are you I'm locked, locked in? in? Look, it's me and you. Dialed. Are you locked it's in? It's me and you. Dialed. I don't feel like you're locked. I love it. I love it. Let's get like into it. Yeah. But uh, uh, yeah. seriously, though, if you're Florida State, this was the last straw. Mm. Getting left out of the playoff, it's the last straw. What do I have to gain from staying in the Atlantic Coast Conference? Uh, what? Oh, adding Stanford and SMU and Cal? Oh, whoa, guys. Everybody, we're legit now. No, it's Florida State. Have some self-respect, yeah. man. One of the best brands in college football when I was growing up. I think we're dealing with something so much bigger right now than just Florida State leaving the ACC. I think we're dealing with something even bigger than the possibility that the ACC collapses. I mean, think about it. The Pac-12 was what, a 108-year-old conference? And it unraveled in less than a year when we thought it was going to be the Big 12. Yeah. After Texas and Oklahoma left, all of a sudden, they add some new teams. It's the Pac-12 that unraveled after being a century old. Look, the, the grant of rights thing, they say it's ironclad for these schools not to be able to get out. I haven't seen the contracts. I'm not sure exactly what the language is. Florida State and the Board of Trustees, they're going to meet today to figure it all out. I just feel like we are headed toward a certain number of teams in college football adding up to a single entity and having a commissioner. Chip Kelly was really on to something when he said that. And it makes sense. That's how every professional league operates. Mm -hmm. But one thing I do want to say about Florida State leaving the ACC as we move forward to a 12-team playoff, they may actually be better positioned to stay in the ACC, assuming that the, the winners of the conferences are going to get the automatic qualifiers. And I'll tell you why. If you see the ACC as being a conference that's easier to win than the SEC or the Big Ten as they add more and more teams, 
and Florida State has been hot on the recruiting trail, Mike Norvell has got Florida State in the right track right now, then you would think if Florida State's a favorite to win that conference on an easier path, they would be an automatic qualifier in a 12-team playoff rather than trying to go to the SEC or the Big or the Big Ten right now and you're not going to win the conference but every, once every couple of years or something, then you have to hope for one of those play-in spots that you Well, can. Well, I, David, and, and I get what you're saying, right? When you're going to 12, and I want to make sure people understand, my argument is not that an undefeated ACC champion or the ACC champion is not going to get in. That's already written into the 12-team playoff. You win your Power 5 conference. As it is, unless they change. Unless they change know. it, which with the way things are changed in college football, who the hell knows what they're going to do tomorrow. Here's, I, I'm looking at it from a, a elongated standpoint of, obviously, if you win the conference, you're in. But you look at Miami and the way they're recruiting with Mario Cristobal. They, they're going to find a way eventually. You look at Clemson. I don't think they're going to be down like they were this past year forever. You look at NC State with Dave Doran and what they're doing. You look at Georgia Tech and Brent Key and what they're doing. I, I just, I, Syracuse just hired Fran Brown. I don't think Florida State is going to go on this dominant run and start winning the ACC every single year. Really? So if you don't win the ACC, the way I look at it is, if you're going to tell me that an undefeated ACC team, like Florida State, it wasn't like Wake Forest went undefeated. An undefeated Florida State can't get into a four-team playoff? I'm more worried about what happens if I'm fighting for a 9, 10, 11, or 12 seed and I'm still in the ACC and it comes down to something that's even or maybe it's a little uneven in my favor and they still let me out. I just think that left me out. I think the committee has set a precedent and said the Atlantic Coast Conference at the end of the day, you're not group of five, but you're not the Big Ten and you're not the SEC. And anybody that says the Big Ten is just the ACC, Maybe you're right from a top-heavy standpoint in the conference right now, but from a revenue standpoint, from a TV well, rights standpoint, the money. from th th they're the biggest the Big moneymaker there is. Big Ten the makes the most money, and I'd rather watch Florida State and Miami play than 95% of the Agree with that 100%. than you could even put together in the Big Ten mm -hmm. and probably more than 85%. But of you know what weighs more. You, you know what that. weighs more. Money oh, for weighs sure. more in the For year. sure. And, and so what's interesting is you just listed off all these good teams and good programs in the ACC as a reason why Florida State may not go on some dominant run like Clemson did and just mm -hmm. be the favorite every year. That's because you keep up with the sport and know football. That makes it look like it's more of an injustice and collusion to a committee standpoint than the ACC being a weak conference. Because like you just said, there's a lot of good football coaches and players and programs in that. So look, from if you just want to look at it as a mathematical perspective on the 12-team playoff moving forward, if Florida State has positioned themselves and they say, hey, we could run this conference for the next five or 10 years, then we would get that automatic qualifier spot for a 12-team playoff. We'd make it every year. The problem, the, what hurts them the most is being 30 to 40 to even $50 million behind in revenue That's the biggest every thing. single Three. year. Think about the compound interest. If you're drawing $30 million a year and Michigan is drawing $80 million a year or Alabama is getting $75 million a year. See, that's why that's why I think we're headed towards a, a uniform, one, one conference, Breakaway one division. Civilization. Everybody gets the same amount of money, which, I mean, we had a, a court case that tr where the NCAA tried to have power over the TV rights deals. That was struck down. The conference happened, so now the SEC can get 75, the ACC can get 30, and guess what? They're both getting paid by the same entity, ESPN. I think it's going to be one, you know, one conference, maybe even two, but you have uh, several different TV providers, just like the NFL does, bidding on the games and the, and the matchups. It's an interesting conversation. Flame and Dragon, what do you think? <clears throat> It's about money. That's what it comes down to. It's all about money. If anything, if FSU, do you go independent? You just go independent? Just be well, independent. from a 12-team playoff standpoint, does that hurt you worse? I mean, you look at, at Notre Dame, they have to thread the needle a lot more not having that conference championship game. I, I just, I, I don't think going independent's the move because, first off, what are you doing in the rest of the sports, right? Like, this isn't baseball. We've seen Oregon State maybe decide to go un independent in baseball. That's kind of a different animal when you have regionals and, and so many guys get into the postseason. But if you look at Florida State, Miami's in a conference. Florida's in the SEC. UCF just joined the Big 12. USF just won a bowl game. It seems like Golish is turning them around there, even though USF's in the group of five. I just, I don't feel like right now is the, the time to go independent. I, I think it's the exact opposite. I, I think Notre Dame's hand's eventually going to be forced to have to join a conference or the breakaway we'll see. civilization of what happens. I feel like we've been saying that forever. But yeah, look, it, it does come down to money. But there is and, a pride aspect here, and I think a lot of the Florida State administration, a lot of the Florida State moneymakers, the guys on this board of trustees that are going to meet, their pride's hurt. 
Sure, and we just saw the Pac-12 blow up. That's already throwing a wrench into an expanded playoff. You see them meeting and trying to scramble, and okay, is it going to be four automatic qualifiers and then eight spots rather than the five we had or the six we had for automatic qualifiers? If the ACC collapses as well, the expanded playoff is in jeopardy next year. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they move with the moving parts. I mean, it's it's just like life. It's a game of adjustments. Mm -hmm. But we want to know what you think. The phone lines are going to open up 7.15 a.m. Central. I know a lot of Florida State fans I want to get in on this. I, I, I know you guys are still 13 flavors of pissed about what happened. And you should be at YouTube. Hope everybody's having a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. However you celebrate, we appreciate you watching us all year. The growth has been incredible. We want to get to a million subscribers. So if you hadn't, hit that subscribe button. If you hadn't seen Lady Ballers, it's about you and four other people on this continent. So head to Daily Wire Plus, check that out, and grab some merch as well. But most importantly, have a safe holiday, have a great new year, and thanks from Grand & Company.